Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to this final SP tutorial video. Wanted to say a big thanks to them for sponsoring these videos. It's been such a great time getting to play around with the software. Um, today we built some really fun stuff. So we have a triple PTZ setup and also a LiDAR system, which allows us to do tracking lighting just like this. We're also messing around with Touch Designer and using it as a virtual production little engine to add some particles and fun effects on top of things. So let's dive in. So lighting setups like this normally would require three follow spot operators to track. Uh, what's really cool is that this whole system is entirely automated. And what we're doing is we're using this LiDAR camera to drive the LiDAR, which is detected by blob tracking. So as you can see, if I put my hand here, it blocks the location and then it immediately snaps onto her. This camera is also being seen by the LiDAR. But what's helpful is that it actually knows that the newest object is the most important. So I'm actually able to step into frame and take over. And then if I step out, then it takes back over to her. These PTZs are being controlled and powered over Ethernet. And they're using the uh, 3G outputs to get the video back out of them into our decimator, which lets us see the whole thing as a uh, multi-view. So can you move to your right and then we'll see this track. So this system automatically looks for where the talent is. If you step into frame, it'll automatically snap right to its location. And we have three cameras actually, all of which are automatically tracking talent. And the best part about this is that it's actually not using any trackers we're all entirely using LiDAR. So this could be any object. This could be a non-humanoid object, like a car driving through in space. Uh, we can use anything that the LiDAR actually sees. So what we have here is we have a few different protocols coming in to Touch Designer. We have Stipe and then also FreeD. These both are really simple to work with. They just send a basic TX, TY, and TZ and RX, RY, RZ us to use. Stipe is a little bit more complicated. Um, it allows us to get also lens data, which is really handy. And then we go over here, we write it over to a couple nulls, push it over into a particle GPU, which is driving our little snowfall scene. And then these little purple shapes are the forces from the two different objects that are colliding with them. This all ends up getting rendered in a normal render pipeline. Except what we do is, is we render just the transparency behind it. And then we go in and we also pipe in the video input. We use an, a cache to delay the render video a little bit so they both line up at the exact same time. That's because you're Graphics are gonna happen earlier than your actual camera data in most cases. So we have to realign those two clips to end up the exact same timeline. Then this gets comped over the top of it with just an over. And we run that through like a bloom. Doesn't really matter what you put it through after that point. Um, but that's how we do the basics of a VP workflow. If we're using Stipe specifically, we're able to use the Stipe top, um, which is only available for pro license and you're using the Stipe channels to allow it to actually do the lens distortion for you. Uh, this is really helpful because it'll actually bend the frame to match the same as the real camera, which uh, is gonna be calibrated for its uh, focus. So then lastly, we are also using a little input from the, uh, the tracker over to run our scene, which has a little fun umbrella and that's just parented over to the camera that's moving around. So this is the basics of our Touch Designer setup. And then let's jump over to SP side now. So over in SP, we have a few different things happening. We have the Stipe coming in. We also have the Panasonic PTZs set up. And we're also using 3D and SACN for this one. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the PTZs with the PTZ camera. Each one of these is underneath a parent. And then those are being mapped over to the Panasonic PTZ output. 
And you can see those guys hanging out up here. And those are just aligned so that they automatically follow. And the way that we do that is with a tracker object. I have a lot of trackers going on for this one. This is a much more complicated project. Um, but the basics are just that you use a target or a object for things to follow. And if they have a uh, target parameter, then you can usually just target it and it'll automatically find its location. Uh, in every scenario, you just want to adjust the position of your fixtures instead of trying to fudge your data um, because it's much more precise than trying to fudge your data, which might be misaligned. Just move the fixture until it accurately represents the real world, and then that point it's going to be much more aligned. So lastly, what we're using is our LiDAR setup. So let's take a look at that. And what we've done is we've taken the Orbex sensor, we've added a volume, and you can follow all of this in uh, volume, or sorry, in uh, video three for our SP tutorials. Uh, that explains how to do blob tracking, LiDAR blob tracking. Um, that I'm not going to go into too much depth on just because it's not super important to how this is working. But what we are doing is we are using a uh, location to, or sorry, we are using a tracker off of our LiDAR to drive our position. Um, so, Elisa, can you move the camera out of frame for me off to the right? Thanks. And then she's going to moving this camera out of frame for us. You can see it in Touch Designer tracking. So lastly, I'm going to hide a couple of things to make this a little bit easier to look at. So can you walk on frame for me? Thanks. So she set it on frame right now. And then the LiDAR is going to pick her up. So this is where things get really fun, is that this is actually using a tracker object. And this one is parented underneath with this target frame. And what this does is it actually makes a rectangle. And the PTZs know how high to frame the headroom and the, uh, the sides of the shot to pad as people move left and right and up and down in their frames. Uh, you can also see that the PTZs should be auto-tracking all of this. Um, those are going up and down, left to right, based on where that is. And let's turn those guys back on so we can see that happening. So those are all auto-tracking and scooching over. Super cool. So we're going to hide those again. And now what we're going to do is the exact same thing except with lights. So this is where it's really fun. So the light fixtures are done by adding these tracking light fixtures. If you right click, go down to fixture, tracking light fixture. And then what we've done is, is we've created a fixture profile. We've gone through, we've mapped all of our parameters correctly for this one. Then we've gone into the light fixture We've gone through and pan tilt to every point that we want to calibrate with. And then <laughs> another step you have to do on top of all that is you have to add uh, tracking points. You have to add six of them to calibrate your lights properly. So what we've done is we've added tracking points all along here. And these allow us to just standardize where a light should be in every single frame. And what I've done is I've taken a light, I've moved it to its position, and then I've saved the uh, pan and tilt data and I've written it over here. And then I've put it inside of calibration point. So I press plus and then I add a new target. I choose which one of these I'm gonna go to. And then I do the pan, I do the tilt, and then I grab these data, I put them in. And then once we do all six of them, I like doing only interpolation. Uh, that was working the best in my scenario. And then I click this small button right here. I run the calibration tool, and then it automatically interpolates all the data so that it figures out, oh, if I'm in this corner, in this corner, I want to average all my positions in between those different places. If we don't calibrate, then the lights end up being in the wrong location. So we do need to actually calibrate if we're using the auto tracking light function. Um, it just takes some time, but it's super worth it once you have figured out your quads uh, to, to do. I like doing personally, a pattern that's kind of like a big square 
um, and then just subdivide it into pieces, hit every point, save those out, and you're good to go. Um, then in order to track, I go to the lights, and then I choose the light fixture, choose my target, and in this case I'm using POI as my point of interest. So let's go over to the POI, and then that is coming off of our volume, and that's covered in tutorial three again, where you can watch that, um, but that's then targeting the volume. The volume figures out the points, and then so this POI is just saying we're only gonna grab point number one, um, so consistently it's gonna only grab the first point. And then lastly, what we're also doing is we are smoothing that data out, and you might find that your points kind of jump all over the place. And to do that, you can smooth in this. So can you walk back and forth for me? So here's a lot of smoothening. Let me zoom in for you. And then here's no smoothening. And you can see just how much that actually affects the final product. We don't do too, too much, because if you do 100%, it might honestly get stuck. Um, so I like go to like 90, 80%. So that's super smooth. That's how we're averaging all of our data. Um, but yeah, this is sort of the method for how we're doing all this. Um, lastly, what we're doing is we're also sending that volume over to on our POI. That's also going out over FreeD right here. And we've just selected ID number one. I've then gone in to Touch Designer I've gone after this FreeD, and then I've selected ID number one. We're just setting localhost right now, and then I've chosen the right network port. Um, so the basics of how you do all this stuff is kind of up to you, um, but we always just want to network in a way that is easy to understand, so try to stack things in order. Um, try to choose port numbers that you know for a factor out of the way, so you don't want to step on another port that already exists. That's definitely a big issue. So lastly, can you walk around again for me and then we'll show them some of this in action. Nice, that's super cool. So yeah, you can imagine that this sort of setup could work in a lot of different ways for interactive and immersive endeavors. Um, you can you know, put lights that only face down and only turn on based on when you walk into frame. Um, you can try a lot of different things using this. Um, it's just a really cool way to use your data in a really smart way, where you're just using position data to drive stuff. Um, if you have a system that is coming from, you know, like a touch screen, you could do automatic tracking of your lights without anybody being tracked, without any, you know, um, LiDAR data. You could just do some sort of XY pad, which draws lines on the ground, and then lights are moving after those lines. Um, so definitely lots of options for what you could do. Uh, this is fun because this is very physical um, and it's also very flashy. So you can imagine for like concerts and things like that, um, having automatic spots is huge. Uh, but another really cool thing with the PTZs, you can have real camera operators also drive the position. And that's a system that I've done in the past where I've had my Stipe camera actually have its focus point as the look at point. So all of my other cameras were sympathetically looking at the exact same location. Um, so you don't even have to have a LiDAR on your stage. You can just use your Stipe. Um, so, so some stuff to think about. Uh, definitely have fun with it. See what you guys can do with it. So thanks for watching this video. We had a great time getting to mess around. And uh, thanks again to SP for, for bringing us on for this project. It's been a great time. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in-depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group